All right, today we're basically talking about rational exponents. And just basically what I've been talking about the last couple times of writing it out and everything. We're going to be actually working with it. So, rational exponents x to the m divided by n is equal to the n root not newt but root n root of x to the m power okay or you could also have this be as the n root x and you could have that in parentheses raised to the m power so you could do it one of two different ways and these are just both the different ways of solving by hand just working with this stuff okay okay so for example let's say we had parentheses negative 64 uh, raised to the Let's do that positive 64 of the uh, let's do yeah 5 6 power okay all right so that means we can do this one of two ways we can either break it up into 6 root of 64 to the fifth power and I could raise 64 to the fifth power and go 64 to the fifth power is going to be a really large number so it would be 6 root of 10737 okay and then I seriously just put that in a calculator now some of you guys may be going oh that seems really large and plus there's not a 6 root calculator Okay, but what you do is you just raise this to the one sixth power on the calculator on Desmos more than likely. Okay, and what you should get is thirty-two, something that simple. Okay, or you could do this way, which is go sixth root of sixty-four and put that in parentheses and do the 6 root of 64 first and then whatever answer that is raise that to the fifth power okay so if you go into your calculator and you go parentheses 64 raised to the 1 6 power and then raise that to the fifth power Okay, you're going to get it to be 2 to the 5th. And then it becomes 32. So it works either way of how you want to do this stuff, okay? All right, now you do need to remember, if you're trying to do negative 32 raised to the um, 4 fifths power, if you're trying to do something like this, uh, you can actually get that and just actually work it out that way. Okay, so I go negative 32 raised to the 4 fifths power, and you should get negative 16. Okay, all right, just to work it out that way. So you do the fifth root of this. Now, if you do do the fifth root of that, you're going to get it to be negative 2, and then you raise it to the fourth power, and you should get that. No, one, two, 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 two. That should actually technically be 16. Yeah, that should be 16. I wrote that down incorrectly. So, uh, now if you are, if you guys are doing it, 32. Now, when you guys are working on this, you can do that with odd roots. But if I were to try the same thing, 
negative 32 uh, raised to the 3 fourths power, that is not real. Okay, because you have to remember you're dealing with an even root here that we can't find the actual answer for. Okay, all right, so you can get the imaginary and just work it out that way, but I highly recommend just stick to just the reals unless this is a two and then you can get the imaginaries and do what you like with it. All right, so just taking a look at this stuff, you're probably asking yourself, okay, these are this is all fine and dandy how to do this stuff, but do the same rules of properties with exponents worth work with this? Yes, it does. So if I had x to the three quarters, and I times that by x to the. To the five six. Okay, you will still be adding their exponents. So it'd be x to the parentheses three fourths plus five six, and you could just work across that way. Are you going to have to pay attention to the denominators and just add them at, accordingly? Yeah, you are going to have to. Okay, so this would be nine twelfths plus uh, ten twelfths. Okay, and this would actually turn into uh, x to the 19 twelfths. Okay. All right, and you could actually bring that out as x times the 12th root of x to the 7th. Okay. All right. Just so you guys understand, you can actually work out this stuff and just work it that way. Okay. Uh, probably leave it in the rational exponents just because it's so easy to work in Desmos and everything. So just keep it right there. All right. Now taking a look over here, how do we actually do it? So you press, you press your number that you want to work with. Uh, let's go 81. Okay. You press your power number and then you put parentheses and then you can start putting in everything you need. Okay, you could put it two thirds. You could do it two fourths. You could do it two six. You know, you could work it whichever way you want. Okay, obviously this is going to be a little bit bigger, but if you have the rational, this treats it as its own sub fractions that you can work with. So if we had something like this, and as you can see, I have two over four. Well, this is the same as one over two. Okay, so the rules still work where we need to to go ahead and uh, simplify fractions as much as we can because it can save us a headache. Okay, now as for those problems from earlier, could we do them on here? Okay, so let's say we had negative 64 and we raise it to the 4 fifths power. You could do it that way. Uh, what about the 5 6 power? You actually can't because we're doing a negative number. So we need to get rid of this negative right here. But now, as you can see, we get 32. Okay. Desmos is an amazing calculator. It does a whole bunch of stuff that you can actually work with. Okay. All right. And as you can see, they actually do the same amount of work we just did. Okay, So if you're just double checking your work just to see what the rational fraction answer is going to be, you can do that. Okay, Now variables do not work as much in here, but this is a pretty neat system in, in, that you can use to simplify some really complex stuff. Can you put in more stuff here? Can you do times by uh, 9 to the 3 halves? Yeah, you could. And that's going to be the same as if I took, let me see, what is that? 9 times 81. Okay? Because 9 to the 3 halves is 81, 8 to the 1 half is that. Okay? And if you actually think about this, we add, we change the exponents, so this would become, you could actually change them to the same base and do some manipulation with that. So this would become 9 to the 2 times one half up there okay which just becomes nine 
all right which ju that just becomes one so this becomes nine to the three halves okay as you can see we're still getting the same one oops I think I screwed it up this should be 27 yep there we go all right so this just becomes nine to the first okay times nine to the three halves okay which just becomes one plus three halves which should be two so this should become nine to the five halves okay and as you can see just the same rules apply when you're adding or subtracting the exponents and just working with everything. So you could take this original problem, you could simplify it to its numbers and then just multiply. Or you can do the actual rules of exponents, okay, and just work your way down and you're still going to get the same answers with Desmos. So it's just gorgeous how it works. Be very careful about your negatives because Desmos knows when you screw up and when you don't. And just remember if the bottom number is even, okay, you can't do that to an actual negative number, but if it's odd, you can. Okay? That's it for rational exponents. Hopefully you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.